Hi, I'm Katie Beth, and today we're going to make a unicorn Halloween costume. Here's the picture that I'm basing it off of. Got it out of a Joanne circular. Now, I'm not much on finding directions on how to do things, so I just kind of used the logic and went out and bought the materials I thought I'd need. So let's get started. The tool I was using already came folded in half, but I wanted to see what that half was. It was about 26, then I divided that in half to 13. I wanted to see about how long those strips would be. Not bad. Then this next part, I tried measuring to see how fat I wanted the strips to be and then realized I didn't care that much. But they're about two to three inches wide each. Now from here I just keep making strips of this color and I continue to make strips of each of the other colors. I'm showing you the elastic here. Now the way I tied it together was I just ran it through my machine really quick. I had black thread in it, but it was okay because the tool's just gonna end up covering it and you won't even see the thread. Also, uh, later I found out that the elastic band I made was far too big for the five-year-old that I'm going to have wear it. So I ended up cutting the band and cutting more of the elastic out and just tying it together with a knot. And it doesn't really matter what color thread you use or that I had a knot in it because the tool ends up covering all of that. Now the way I tied the tool onto the elastic is I folded it in half and then wrapped that center of the half around the elastic and then pulled through. And to tighten it on the band, you just keep pulling the tail and then mush it in together with the other color. And do this with every color you have. I ended up using the pattern, pattern of pink, teal, purple, and then sparkly pink. The sparkly pink was actually pretty difficult in comparison to use. It was a different type of tool, and it has more of a stretch in it. So you'll see I grab it. Um, when you put it on, it actually ends up stretching a lot because when you pull it through, the pull on it stretches it out. However, it is still really cute. It ends up being a little longer, but it's kind of cute because it's a, a skinnier, longer, pink, sparkly highlight. So it's really pretty still. Uh, that's what the first row looks like. And from there, you just keep going and filling up the entire elastic band. Now, once I was done with my skirt, it wasn't quite full enough. So I ended up making a second skirt and here I am tying the two together. I'm just using the same technique to tie them together as I did to tie the tool onto the elastic. So just folding the tool in half and tying it around and pulling through. In just a moment, it's gonna show you that I only did a few at first to see if I liked the skirt, which I did. So I ended up tying about four to six more on there to tie it together really nicely. It has that really nice poof that I wanted and was looking for. So next we have the headband. First I grabbed my first piece of glitter foam. It's the dark pink in the main color of the costume. Now I kind of rolled it around to make the cone. I wanted more of a longer unicorn horn instead of the tinier, fatter one. I feel like the short, fatter ones look a little more like party hats and I wanted it to say horn, not hat. I already did it in the video while I was talking about it but I took the hot glue gun and made a line along the foam to get that first line of glue to hold it in the cone shape. And then once I had that, I cut the cone shape out from the rest of the foam. And now I keep putting layers of glue inside the foam on anything that I, might, that I think might peel up. So I want it to stay in that cone shape. I don't want any of it to unravel or unfold. Remember, the glue's really hot. I think I keep burning my fingers during this. So after I get that cone shape that I'm really looking for, I set it down on the table to make sure it'll stand up straight. I don't want it to be crooked, but I want it to be straight so that it'll fit on the headband straight. It wasn't quite straight, so I cut off the extra. I want it to get even. And while I was doing this, I noticed that the foam is a little flimsy. If you don't have stuffing, it'll be fine, but I actually had stuffing. So I decided to stuff the horn to make it a little sturdier. 
So I cut out an end cap by measuring it around the bottom of the horn. It's not quite a perfect circle, but neither is the horn, so I just kept trying to get it to be the right size. After I decide I have the right size or good enough shape that I like, I go ahead and start stuffing the cone. Now first I put a tiny bit in and shove it in with my pin to make sure I get it up there in the tip. I want it to be more, not quite solid, because I don't want to poke anyone's eye out, but I also don't want it to be flimsy. So I kind of tried to stuff enough in there that it would be sturdy enough for what I want. Then after that, I took the glue gun and put a nice layer of glue around the edge of the end cap. And then I put it into the bottom of the horn I pushed it in so it's not just around the outside layer, it's also on the inside as well. And then I decided I wanted to put another layer of glue around the outside of the horn. Something more to just keep it in there. Next I wanted to cut out the ears and I remembered that I had a stencil left over from some fall leaf magnets I put on my refrigerator. So I actually use one of the leaves as a stencil for the size of the ear that I want. So I go ahead and trace that out on the dark pink glitter sheet of paper I have there. There I am cutting them out. I was actually pretty excited that the leaf worked for the perfect shape of ear that I was looking for. Now since that worked out so well with the shape, I didn't know how I was going to get the smaller shape inside the ear. And then I remembered that I also have cookie cutters that are leaf shapes. And since the leaf shape worked for the outside, it might work for the inside also. I went ahead and pushed the cookie cutter on the light pink glitter sheet and it also seemed like it worked surprisingly well. So when I cut them out, I first kind of cut them out into almost a diamond shaped because I didn't want to put the stem shape on there. So I wanted to see what those look like on the ears first. I didn't quite like the diamond shape, so then I go ahead and cut off one end of the diamond and round it out. And then I place them on the dark pink ears that I have cut out already. And see how I like the placement. Then I go ahead and consult the original picture that I had that I was looking for a, an, as an idea. And that's pretty close to what the picture had. Now that I've found the positioning that I like, and it's pretty close to what the picture had, I go ahead and glue it down to so get the glue on there. And then after I put it on there, I kind of smash it down to make sure it dries nice and straight, or nice and flat actually. Then it's headband time. I actually found one of the headbands that I really liked out of the headband set I got. I got three different sets of headbands at the dollar store because I wasn't sure which type I would like, but I ended up liking these sparkly ones and the pink was almost an exact match for the color that I needed. So I just put some glue on top of it. I tried to measure out where center was and put some glue there. And then I smash down the horn on it, right where I want it. So that's exactly where I thought I wanted the horn on it. However, since it's only held down by that center part, I felt like that might be kind of flimsy and easy to tear off. Or if she hits something, maybe rip off of it. So I ended up cutting out another piece of foam to kind of glue down and strengthen 
Strengthen the connection between the horn and the headband. And I try to glue in extra glue under there so the entire thing is just really well glued on. I really like sturdy things, like sturdy projects. So I wanted that to be on there pretty sturdily, if that's a word. And then I cut off all the extra pieces of the foam because I didn't really want it visible from the outside. After that dried, I decided that it was sturdy enough, but I didn't really like the edges that it left, even with the glue being clear. So I went ahead and took a thin strip of the purple tool and then ruffled it around the edges. And I used the hot glue gun for this. I would put a strip of glue and then just match up all the tool on top of the glue, ruffling it around. So I like the ruffle that I put on. It added a little something, but I feel like it didn't quite add enough, and I also didn't really like the edge on the bottom. I thought it still looked a little weird, and so I got some teal ribbon, which I also already had, and I just glue it around the edges. I just put a band of hot glue and then match up the ribbon around it. And then cut it off. And I secure it on there with the glue. And then I just put some glue underneath the edges and fold the ribbon under. I am gluing kind of inside and on the bottom. And then I just fold the ribbon under and press down on it to make it stay. Meanwhile, folding the ribbon under like this and gluing it down is also helping the headband be sturdier because it's gluing the ribbon down to hold the horn onto the headband and the extra piece of foam I put under there. Now moving on to the ears. So initially I just tried to, after measuring out where they'd go, I just tried to stick the ears straight on and then I realized that was also really flimsy of an idea. So I let it dry a little where I put it and then I took the glue gun and put some glue behind the ear and then folded the ear down on it. And then I had this really good idea that that might actually help it stand up better if I folded it back down on the glue and then folded it back forward so that it would kind of force itself to stand up. And I was actually pretty excited that that worked. And so I did the exact same thing on the other side. Just glued the ear down. and then put hot glue behind it and pushed it down and then pushed it forward so that they're folded to make it stand up forward. As you can see from the back, the hot glue got kind of messy, but because it's hot glue, you can just peel it off when it's dry. Now, I didn't like the seams. You could kind of see the seams from where the glitter foam was not glittery around the edges. And so I took some Elmer's glue and just glued over that and then put some glitter right over that. I actually had this glitter already that pretty much matched exactly what I needed it to. I'm sort of a craft hoarder, so I have a bunch of extra glue, glitter, ribbon, rhinestones, everything around my house already. And so I'm just putting more glue down and putting more glitter down just to cover up the extra glue that I put on or the seams. And now I'm putting it along the main seam. As you can kind of see there, you see the edge of where the glitter foam isn't glittery anymore. I just glue right over that and kind of smear it on so it'll blend in with either side of the glitter foam. Then I pour my glitter on top and then shook it off and there you go, it covers the edges. 
Now for the unicorn mane. Now to make the mane, I pretty much use the exact same technique I used to make the skirt, where I just folded the tool in half and wrapped it around the headband and then pulled it through. However, this one I kind of used longer pieces. Just because I wanted it to be a long, beautiful mane and to stand out a little different from the skirt. So I end up just folding and pulling through the pieces and I kind of try to put them in the exact same spot instead of putting them along the headband. I tried putting them in the same spot so that it would be more of like a mane and not a veil. I didn't want it to look like a bride veil. I think I used about six strands, probably eight. So I used two of each color and just kept putting them in the same spot. So now I pull all the extra pieces away from it and we just have the long, beautiful mane. P.S. I also put it on a separate headband from the horn in case she wanted to wear it separately but she can also wear it together. So I liked having them as separate pieces. And that's pretty much it, the unicorn horn and mane. I hope this unicorn tutorial was helpful and thanks for watching.